of this video is to describe the fabrication of a lower Z-bend utility advancing wire. The armamentaria is as follows. You will need O2O stainless steel wire, a typodont model or a patient, the light wire plier, the sharpie pen, and a plastic ruler if so indicated. The first wire that I came across happened to be a large square which doesn't fit this arch very well because this arch happens to be a medium ovoid so we're going to reshape this wire into a medium ovoid. So I will remove a large square from the package and you can see it does not fit this type of knot very well because the cuspids are too expanded. So with a few minor strokes of the wire and then <clears throat> some rounding we can convert in just a few seconds a large square into a medium ovoid that fits this arch very nicely. The next step I want to mark the midline with a better pen because it's so difficult to see the midline here so I will mark it right there. That way I will be able to put the wire back into the midline for each of the following procedures. So there is the middle in the middle. And you can't see that of course so you're going to have to trust me. Next, the lower incisor teeth have been previously aligned with a sectional nitai wire because they must be straight for an O2O stainless steel to go in there. The next step is to mark one side or the other two millimeters distal to the tube, two millimeters distal to the tube because this is where the first bend will be made. So I will mark that two millimeters distal to the tube and you can clearly see that mark. I will remove the wire, placing the light wire plier on top of that mark with the round beak on top. Notice how close I am to the end of the plier because these bends need to be small. And from basic wire bending skills, notice that I am perpendicular to a tangent on the curve. And in this plane of space, I am parallel to the occlusal plane. I'm going to hold this very tightly. You can see that I'm holding tightly. Then roll the wire up over the top of that round beak 180 degrees until you have paralleled, until you have paralleled those two wires. Next, you would put it back in the arch and then mark it at the mesial of the tube. But I'm going to estimate where that is because we know that molar tubes in the POS system are generally three millimeters wide. So I can estimate that and expedite this procedure. So again, I will bend around the round end of the plier, putting it right there at three millimeters from the tube. Same wire bending principles apply. Perpendicular, parallel, hold tightly. Roll this back over the top. Roll this back over the top until the distal and the mesial aspects are parallel. Are parallel. And by parallel, I mean those two ends, distal and mesial, are paralleled. Notice how this could exit, excuse me, this could exit the tube and impinge on the gingiva below the six. To eliminate this problem, you can place the plier on the wire and again hold it very, very tightly because it wants to twist in your hands and simply bend the Z-bend toward the tooth, toward the tooth and the tube. Now you can see that the bend would exit the molar tube and go buckily instead of straight gingivally. So this side has been completed. Now we will insert that into the molar tube. It's going to go under the molar hook. You can see that right there. And this acts as the stop, if you will, acts as the stop, if you will, to affect the advancement that we're going to do at the end of this presentation. Now we have to construct the other side. So you make sure that this end is butted up against the molar, which it is not at this moment. 
butt it up against that molar, put it into the slots, come around to the other side. Now you're going to mark two millimeters distal to the tube again. And that is where the second bend is going to be made. I will remove the wire from the arch. Try to not rub off the mark. Put the plier right on the mark. And again, you can see I'm perpendicular to a tangent on the curve. I'm parallel to the occlusal plane. Hold very, very tightly. Bend the distal fragment over the top until the two ends are 180 degrees and now parallel to each other. Mark at the distal, excuse me, the mesial aspect of the tube, which is three millimeters forward of that. Hold very tightly. Bend that over the top again until you have paralleled the distal and mesial portions. Very nice. Now you can see that those two are parallel. We'll do the same situation to take the wire and make it exit the molar tube and go buckly and gingibly instead of straight gingibly. And you can see that angle here, that angle right there. Very nice. And I have distorted the wire a little bit, so I'll return it back to the same shape so that it fits my arch approximately. Now let's reinsert the wire and see how we did. So you're going to put it back in the tube on each side. And of course you would cut this flush to the distal end of the molar because there's no reason for it to be long. There's no cinch back or anything on there. And it goes under the hook as you can see. And back in the molar tubes. And now you see a relatively passive Z-Bend utility arch. Relatively passive Z-Bend utility arch. And this would be tied into the brackets like that. And the activation of the wire will be to activate the Z-Bends one side or both sides. You can alternate each month. It doesn't really matter how that works because the effect will be the same. The force on the incisors will be forward. Remember, we're trying to advance the incisor to relieve crowding. So let me do a very gentle activation of one side. And it's easier if you take the wire out. And then you will be using up wire from within the loop. So you simply insert the square end of the plier into one of those loops and gently squeeze. Then insert the square end of the wire into one side of that loop and gently squeeze until the ends until the ends are paralleled again until the ends are paralleled again and you should be able to see that this side loop has advanced patient right and this side loop has not so let's reinsert and see what that activation might look like period Reinsert into the tube. Sorry. Reinsert into the tube. And then you will see that the wire should be 1.5 to 2 millimeters away from the brackets. And when you engage that in here, you can see the force is going to advance the lower incisors. Incidentally, the buccinator muscle pushing on this wire will also help advance the incisors. And you will need to determine how much advancement you need. We know from tooth anatomy that the normal tooth mass from the distal of the two to the mesial of the six is eight plus eight plus seven is 23 millimeters. So when you can take your handy plastic ruler and measure from the mesial of six to distal of two, and if you can get 23 millimeters in there, that is all the space that you need. Then you can take an impression, fabricate and cement a lower lingual arch, remove the lower incisor brackets, and that lower arch phase one aspect of this treatment will be done. 
I hope this has helped you in your fabrication of a Z-Band utility arch. And remember, you need to practice this on a model before you ever do it in a patient because trying to do it with these big long wires in the distal would be impossible inside the oral cavity. So take an alginate over the bands and prepare this at your desk or at your lab at your leisure. And when you take it to the patient's mouth, it should fit very nicely. Remember to cut the distal ends flush to the tube because there's no cinch back. There's nothing needed distal to this aspect. Notice too that the wire has a slight intrusive force, but because of its flexibility, you'll never see any deleterious effects of this. Thank you for your time, and I hope you have enjoyed this presentation.